This is a bearing. You can find it here, here, and even in here. But what does it do? Well, it lowers friction and supports loads by resting on rollers that spin around the outside surface. And this is a bearing made out of Lego. What difference do bearings make on a Lego vacuum engine? Today, we're gonna find out. Here I have three six by six round piston flathead vacuum engines. They're built almost identically, except one is built with regular Technic bricks and axles, and the other two have different types of roller bearings. Let's run the normal one first. So this engine runs pretty well. Sure, it's not optimized for speed and efficiency, but it's pretty good for a simple engine. Now these two have roller bearings. This one more specifically has what's called a needle bearing, where it uses these three stud long bars as the rollers. Let's go test this one. This one was definitely surprising. I figured it would run better than the normal one, but that's apparently not the case. I'm not exactly sure why this is, but my friend Engineer has a theory. So I think the reason why this needle bearing doesn't work as you might expect it to is because there's a lot of play, and you can hear it in mine. It, it runs okay as long as gravity is pulling it downwards, but as soon as you introduce the vacuum sucking the crankshaft upwards, you really get all of the play of that shaft. So just to illustrate that, I'll take mine apart and show you guys how much I'm able to move that. When we calculated the dimensions of the Lego parts, it was something like 1.6 to around two millimeters of play. And if you think about the egg that you're spinning on the countertop, whenever you have a boiled egg, everything inside is solid. So nothing is moving around and able to absorb energy. So it just spins for a long time and you can try this at home. But when you take a non-boiled egg and the yolk can slosh around inside of it, then it absorbs a lot of the energy and a lot of it goes into the yolk and the fluids inside of the egg and it gets absorbed, taking a lot of the energy, sucking it out of the egg and the energy that you put in by spinning it, making it not spin as long. And I think that's what's happening with the engine is that bearing is being forced up and down. Whereas maybe if you ran it on pressure where it, the only force it experiences is gravity pushing it down and air pushing it down, it wouldn't really play around as much, so to speak and it would um, result in better performance, but that's yet to be tested. So this one seems like it could work if there's a good way to remove the extra play, but that might be something for another video. So now, let's move on to the next engine. Okay, so this engine also has roller bearings. However, they are a little bit different than the previous one. This engine uses a caged, self-contained design that allows the bearings to be easily removed without making a mess, which is what would happen with any other kind of Lego bearing. This design also has considerably less play than the needle bearings. So let's find out how it runs. So as we saw, this engine is a phenomenal improvement over both engines. So in conclusion, roller bearings on LEGO vacuum engines definitely make a difference. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's probably worth looking into LEGO bearings if you enjoy building these engines as much as I do. Also, if you'd like a fun place to hang out with fellow LEGO and engine enthusiasts, you might want to join my Discord server. Also check out my channel memberships if you'd like to help support me monetarily and also get a few perks for yourself. Links and information for both are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.